So it's Saturday evening and I'm using this beautiful long evenings to catch up on a lot of work. We sold a lot of cars last month that aren't out the door yet. So we've got the Green Mazda 2, the Golf and the Honda Logo over there. The Honda Logo has had its MOT. It's waiting on one bush, which is holding up the whole affair. But I also need to paint the front bumper. I can't afford to outsource the front bumper on that based on the deal I've done with a customer. The Golf I've literally picked up this Saturday morning from having the paint done. Malcolm's done that front bumper for me and the rear quarter that were both scuffed up. I'd already done the wheels, hadn't I? So now what I need to do is make sure that everything else matches. You can see when Malcolm's polished that panel there, I need to machine polish the rest of the car and get that done. The Mazda 2 has gone down for its MOT, but I had a pre-MOT done. I don't like to have a long list of stuff that was done on the MOT, so they do a pre-MOT down for me at Motorworks and told me what was needed. I grabbed the car back because Davey's supposed to be coming on Monday to do paint, and if I wait and do all this, get it MOT'd, and then Davey's isn't available and I have to get over to Malk, we'll be waiting about a week because he's got a lot of work on. So I thought, pull it back, do the MOT advisory stuff, Sorry, the pre-MOT stuff. Get David to do the paint and drop back down for his MOT. Now, if you remember, we we're painting the rear quarter in this and it had some big dents. Now, I didn't want David to fill those dents with filler. So what I've done is I've got out my glue gun and puller kit. And as you can see, I've actually managed to pretty much, there were, there were deep dents along here, aren't there? I've managed to pretty much get them out. Now, these are too tight for the glue gun. Where you can see the sanding is where I've roughed the surface up very lightly just to allow the glue to take better. These very tight ones, I don't think that glue puller is going to pull that because it's too tight. But that means that those are the only little areas we're going to have to get filler in. This is going to have to have the lightest of skims. It still would slight wave to it. But I've taken out all those deep dents, so no more filler there. So I'm going to fiddle around a little bit more with that. Now, one of the other advisories was the headlamps would fail MOT um, because they're too hazed up. So in between the glue going off and those, I'm wet sanding them. So hopefully tonight, my plan tonight is finish off the bits and bobs on this, get it back down for its MOT. I might have to hand it over to somebody else to do the disc. I think it needs discs and pads and some tires hate selling cars before they're ready it does wind me up because obviously people are waiting on the cars and i don't think just people understand how slow it can sometimes be not you know you drop a car down on a monday to a garage they're busy anyway so they start on tuesday on tuesday they find they need parts on wednesday they get the parts they turn out to be wrong they order the right parts they come in on thursday by which time they've started work on another car because they can't just stand about waiting for the parts so then it's friday before they get started but it doesn't work out they don't get it all done on friday the weekend goes by they don't open the weekend monday they're back on it then they have to re-mot it they'll wait for an mot spot to come out so it can take you know, it can take a week and a half just to get a car for an MOT. And then if you add in getting the paint done, waiting for the paint guy to be available, um, you can be an easy couple of weeks getting a car um, sorted that isn't even a problem car, that doesn't even need a lot of doing. So I like to try and sell them when they're like the uh, Honda went out where it was all MOT'd and everything and ready to go. But people turn up and they wander through the stock and they pick a car out. Uh, I try and give the longest time frames possible to not, so not over over sort of do their expectations but unfortunately i'm not in control of when it's going out to two or three different people for different things i'm not really in control of what goes on but anyway hopefully this will get me ahead tonight so that's the advantage of long evenings and i had a few beers with the lads last night so i can afford to take saturday night getting some more work done one thing i am in control of is my online safety because i of course use the sponsor of today's video and our longest running sponsor surfshark I go online, Surfshark provides me with a VPN, a virtual private network. This means my internet connection can't be spied on by hackers or internet providers or anything like that. All my data is safe and encrypted as I'm online. Now, many of you know by now that as much as I like the way that Surfshark keeps me safe while I'm online, doing my business and so forth, one of my favorite features of it is its ability to allow me to watch geo-locked content. What I mean by that, what I mean is, you know when you're on those streaming services, Netflix, Prime, all those kind of things, a lot of the time there's series and movies available in other countries that aren't available in this country. I used an example last time that we were looking for Smokey and the Bandit because I just got myself the Trans Am, my daughter had never seen it. Well, we were chatting the other day, I said, you know there's a sequel to it, don't you, Smokey and the Bandit 2? Search for it on my Netflix, not available. No problem at all, I've got my Surfshark stuff. So I go up here. I quickly scroll down and let's choose the U USA. I can change my IP address 
so that the uh, provider thinks that I'm actually based in a different country. So now it thinks I'm based in Buffalo in the United States. So if I do that search again, there we go. We've got Smokey and the Bandit too, and I can show you why you should never make sequels. <laughs> like I said, you'll, you'll find this works on loads of different streaming services. It can even be used like if you're on eBay and you want it to stop flipping you back to the UK version because you're looking for a random part in America, for example, or a handbrake cable for a Trans Am. Surfshark starts at just £1.99 per month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And if you use my link in the description down below with my discount code, you'll get an extra three months free of charge. I want to take this opportunity to thank Surfshark for being a continued sponsor of Chops Garage. If you want to have a go at taking dents out of home, but you don't want to be sort of welding tabs on and having to sand back paint and paint it, and a lot of time if it's stuff that's in a... A nice flat panel like one of these doors maybe and it's a fairly needs to be a fairly decent sized dent you can get one of these glue puller kits so you get a slide hammer and you get little plastic cups out and all then you need is a glue gun and some glue get good quality glue it's going to work better ideally i say i lightly rough the surface up with something light like a 1200 and 800 making sure i'm not going through the lacquer because then you can machine polish it afterwards a lot of the time and not actually have to do any painting at all if you can get the dent out fully and you just glue the tabs in place put some of the glue on let them really dry off before you do that make sure you wipe down the um paint surface with something like this this is um what do they call this stuff i'm in a total mental blank it's your wipe down your pre-wipe down for painting white spirits would probably do the same thing or glass cleaner wipe it make sure you've got no residual waxes and stuff like that before you glue your tab on once they're on there they really are <laughs> he says they really are that genuinely i couldn't have made that up that's the first tab i've done that today on and it's come straight off possibly because i didn't actually fully clean off the tab before i did it. you need to make sure you get all the old glue off first i was a bit lazy and didn't so yeah you can see like i say these were all quite heavy dense it won't do stuff like that. that's too tight you've got a swage line there and that's a very thin bit of, uh, it's very, you know, sort of a short area. So there isn't a lot for it to pull on. I think there may be some guys with some, you know, more experience and some better kit that can, but you're not really going to get that out. But dents up here like that on a, on a wider panel, you can with these slide hammers. They're not expensive. You can get them on eBay. Cheap setups. Just in case there's a chance that some of you have never known how to do headlights or haven't seen the hundreds of videos that are out there. It's basically a case of just sanding your headlights. The plastic will sand. I start with... 1500 then hit it with 2000 sometimes i hit it with 3000 as well and then i go over it with a machine polisher with a heavy compound and then a fine compound and i finish it off normally by putting a sealant over the headlight as well so that the um so that it sort of seals the plastic in now you can see i haven't taped around the headline here if you've got a very tight uh headlights very tight to the body you might want to mask off around it so you don't rub the paint but this is such a fine sandpaper if you did if you use 1500 and 2000 you could just compound out your scratches really quickly you just want to basically keep going until you get clear water instead of yellowy water on the headlights and go in lots of different directions you can't obviously sand through the plastic so you can't overdo it the only way you can overdo it is if you use too coarse a compound and then you end up with scratches that are really hard to get out so go with the lighter compounds and just do more work again you could put this on a buffer as well and do it with a sander but i like to tend to do it by hand you get a feeling for when the headlight starts to get smooth and there's no resistance any longer like about now and there we have it headlights done i say they're wet at the moment so they'll they'll dry out a little bit faded than that but then when i put the polish on it they'll come back up again so the person will actually be able to see it at night now won't they it's amazing what difference it makes to a car the front end of the car just it can look very aged and that can bang make it look immaculate straight away so well worth doing it if you've got a car that's starting to get headlights that are a little bit harder to see through because it's not just a cosmetic thing like i say it's better when you do that you'll get much brighter lights when you're driving along on the road but late saturday night not going to the pub getting those dents out so david didn't have to put a lot of paint in he's come along and said no shit james that's nowhere near good enough i said don't swear on my <laughs> So that late Saturday night, I stopped and um, pulled those dents out of the Mazda. It was a pointless exercise because Davey said that's nowhere near good enough, James. And he's got his uh, little stud dent puller out instead so that he has to put next to no filler in. So there we go, guys. <laughs> anyway, we're getting it done. Unfortunately, these don't have a paint code, so Davey has to go off a scan. 
So the paint might not be 100% bang on, but it'll be a lot better than me rattle cannon it, won't it? Apparently. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, that'll be a lot better. <laughs> Davey is now left after telling me my work was no good and doing his own reshaping of that uh, wing. Look at the colour match. He's got it bang on. I mean, obviously, bear in mind that door's dirty. I haven't polished that door yet. When I polish that door, it's going to blend in fantastic. He's gone round this corner and decided to pick up a little mark there as well. He's done a cracking job on it. Now, again, this one is sold and needs to go down and get his MOT, but I had to pull it back so we get the paint done because that's the only day Davy could come in. It's got a broken rear spring, which has just arrived. I'm going to try and fit that myself now and jack it up and see if I can't leave a bar it out and get the spring in because it's not, obviously, it's just free floating in the back, those ones, rather than being on a, on a strut at the front. If I can do that, I've got discs and pads coming for the front of it as well. If I can swap those out myself and then take the car back with the MOT work done. So... Managed to, I say, get the uh, lever bar underneath the spring, boing it out after jacking the car up. A um, bit annoying, this one is only broken at the very, very top. So, presumably, there's a tighter coil at the top there. I'll have a look at the other one when we get it out of the box. Yeah, it looks like we're missing the very top part of the coil there. Only a tiny bit, look. How annoying is that? So new spring in, in the end what I did was uh, undid the shock absorber bolt there, took that one out to allow the arm to drop a little bit further and that managed to help me get the new one in its seat properly in its correct position up there with the little cut pointing forwards at the bottom. So that's one of the MOT things done. I forgot to get David to paint a bit down the bottom here that was scuffed, but luckily he actually left me paint yesterday. So I've actually managed to... Um, uh, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say, I've managed to paint it with the paint he had left over, but that of course meant, I know someone who's going to be very pleased about this, Royston, setting up my compressor and using the gun. And with just a little bit of paint Davey left me, it was enough to actually do that bottom corner, which is great. I, I need some practice with the gun setting up. I had to obviously use can of lacquer afterwards because I didn't have any lacquer for the gun. But actually, yeah, I put the pressure nice and low, kept it localised. The colour match is good. I need to buff it off still, but you can see my metallic is quite nice and it matches the rest of the green quite well. So pleased with that. So this is going back down for MOT tomorrow. I've rung the boys. I've got the brake pads and discs in there, the oil, uh, air filter, so they can do a service when it's down. Now I'm going to try and get some of that done before it goes down tomorrow, but it's hectic. I've got to bring the Golf in today and machine polish the Golf off. I've got to, I'll be pulling the late tonight, making sure I get that done today. Obviously, I've got to finish off those wheel trims, so the chances of me getting that done today are low. And then tomorrow morning, I've got to go pick up the Mondeo that's been having the corner of the bumper sprayed by Malcolm, and then go and pick up the Mini that is having its new that's had its new clutch fitted. Ended up having a dual mass flywheel on that. I didn't know that Mini Cooper S is had a dual mass flywheel as well as a clutch, so that was an expensive change. Whoever gets that car will be laughing. So I've got to go and pick that up. So that's a good proportion of tomorrow gone as well. So. <clears throat> really really got to crack on because i haven't really got anything up for retail sale at the moment but we'll probably drop the mondo straight over for mot in fact we won't bring it back here and photograph clearly because i want to get the cars after running around like a blue ass fly trying to get these cars ready that weren't ready when they were sold i want to try and get everything else ready before i advertise it so that i can have a bit more of a relaxed second part of the month and not be chasing my tail like i am at the moment anyway let's get on and do those wheel trims I did actually do a quick little blow over on the wheel trims on the Mazda as well. Nothing crazy. They weren't terrible. But I did I did put the black behind the wheels again. And then gave the wheels a, a, a spray as well. It's all extra work. I know that when I'm busy I shouldn't probably be doing. But now Davey's done the paint on that side. It looks bang on. Once we've cleaned and polished the rest of this. It's going to look fantastic. So it seemed a shame to send it out with scuffed wheel trims. All right, and uh, let's get these ones done for the logo. So the little Mazda's had a clean down now after all that work. We've done the engine bay detail, we'll wait for that to dry off, and then we'll put some silicon on or something similar. The bodywork's all been detarred, so we get rid of all the little black dots. It's been washed. Now, obviously, in this weather, you want to keep rinsing it off so you don't get um, water streaks on it. What we are going to do is towel it down now straight away. Um, GT Shine has sent me some of their twist drying towels i say this is important because if you're ever washing cars outside and you find that you are 
then getting sort of streaky marks on afterwards it's because you've let it dry in the sun so if we run the gt towel over here i've kept that other one bagged up because i'm going to be giving some of these away later on so might as well use the one i've already got out of the packaging let's see how you can already see it started to happen on some of the windows but this will mean that you end up with a streak free finish look at that for with 52,000 miles at 3,600 i think it's a good buy isn't it inside's all been done And it's got the advisory free MOT and it's had the service as well. So all set for its new owner. Another cracking British car auctions transformations. Look at this car now. So let's have a little look at the numbers on the Mazda. We can do this because we bought it from BCA, so we're not giving away any trade secrets. Uh, we got it from BCA for £2,350, which, you know, that's the fees, everything else. It was probably a 2K car before the fees and everything else. Got the filters, the brakes, the spring from GSF. Got the paint done by uh, Davey. Uh, he charged me for doing two panels because he went from the quarter into the rip bumper. Uh, the MOT was £258. I've put, put, checked out what the warranty is going to be warranty-wise. Obviously, I won't put that on until the day the car goes away uh, for three months cover with that. So my total spend is 3092 Sold it for 3695 the gross margin, 1334, so the margin between what I bought the car for, what I sold it for, which is what I pay VAT on. A lot of people don't know you pay the VAT on this. So I've got to pay £224. So even though my true net was nowhere near 1334, I've got to pay it on the gross. So I've got to pay the VAT man £224. Um, I will be claiming £129 back in VAT, but I'm still going to be £100 odd down, aren't I? So my um, net is 37794, add back in that VAT, I'm left with £507.83. So as I always say, we're looking at sort of like 15%. Um, now obviously, that isn't the end of it, there could be further problems going forwards. If we net a clean 500 from it, fair enough. It's a lot of work for £500. <laughs> uh, there's no two ways about it. But with the cheapies, it's hard to make the the wide, mar you know, the, the big margins on them. So, as always, the purpose of this isn't to say I make money, I don't make money. It's just to show what the true profits are on cars, cheap cars you buy at auctions. The Mazda had a good report, didn't have any major uh, indicators on it at all, like any warnings on the report for mechanical damage, anything like that. The mileage was low. And it just had that dink in the arch. So, you know, it isn't a car you're going to win cheap. So while Davey's been on the Mazda, I've been on the little Honda logo. I've nicked back from the garage because they're waiting for a bushing. And I'm respraying the top edge of the front bumper where it was all scraped up before. And there was a big scrape in the door, which I have filled and wet sanded back. It's still visible in a couple of little places. Well, look at the job Sam's done inside the CRV. I don't know, he's got the leather to shine like this. This is what he's dropped off to us. So I've got to thank Clive, one of our subscribers, for messaging me. His father-in-law was selling his Skoda Yeti. Just a quick reminder of that Surfshark offer. Use my link in the description down below and get three extra months free of charge.